Hello everyone, my name is Amy, I'm your German Chingu and welcome to my first ever video on this channel. Because this is my first video, let me make a quick introduction. As I mentioned before, my name is Amy, I'm currently 25 years old and I'm currently living in Germany for a few more days until I will start my working holiday in South Korea. Yay! In today's video, I want to explain to you how to get the working holiday visa. But this is only valid for Frankfurt if you go to the embassy of Frankfurt because every embassy has their own rules, their own... I don't know, everything is different, even the form is different. Um, I have a friend who's already in uh, Korea and will may appear in some videos or like every video. <laughs> um, yeah, she went to another embassy and we had some differences. <laughs> Many, to be honest. She didn't need so much money. Okay, but let's start. To get your visa for the working holiday in South Korea from the Embassy of Frankfurt, <laughs> you need the filled out application form, a picture, a valid passport, the tickets for your flights, statement of account, some insurances, a traveling plan and some money and an envelope to give to them. <laughs> So some of the things are very easy to get or to fill out or whatever, but the flight, <laughs> it made me crazy. I wanted to book the flight to Korea and back because you need it to get your visa. So I went, no, first I went to the internet. <laughs> um, I tried to book the flight for Korea and back. Uh, which was January 2019 to go to Korea and January 2020 to go back. This was in July, I think. Yeah, but the problem is you can't book a flight over a year ahead of the date you want to fly on the internet. So I went to the travel agency and thought maybe they can book it, but they didn't. It's not possible to book a flight over a year ahead of the date you want to fly. So how do I get my visa? I had an apartment, I had a job. I have to quit this stuff and I won't quit this stuff without having a visa because if I quit this stuff and didn't get the visa, then I had no job and no apartment and everything would be bad. So I called them, I emailed them, I got on their nerves <laughs> to find out what, how can I make this possible. And so they told me, I only have to have the flight ticket to Korea and at least 4,000 euro on my bank account. Honestly, this was different to Chris because Chris only needed 2,700 euro. Why do I need 4,000? But it's okay, I got this. So I got the 4,000 euro together, booked my flight to Korea, got everything else together and went to the embassy. You have to go to the embassy because you can't send them the stuff per mail. I went there, it was a big ass building and I was super confused, super excited. I didn't know what to do. <laughs> so I went to the wrong floor first. But I found it. Everything's okay. Uh, I gave them all my stuff and they checked it. I should sit down. And suddenly the lady called me back and asked me, Why do you want to do this now when you fly in January? And I looked at her and said, Job, apartment? I have to quit all this stuff. And I have to quit this three months before I leave. So. I just want to have the visa first and then quit everything else. In case I don't get the visa, I don't have a job in an apartment, what should I do? So she checked everything and in my case I forgot some of the insurances. 
but it was okay. She said I could send this per mail to her later and yeah, so she got over my stuff. I sent her the insurance stuff later and about a week later I got my passport back. I was super excited when the mail came because I didn't know is it did I, did I get did I get this? Is can I go? Is, is it is it okay? Um, so I opened up the envelope and yeah, I was so so excited. I can't wait to go back to meet all my friends, to go to even more cafes, <laughs> to eat all this stuff. <laughs> I'm way too excited about this, but it's a huge thing in my life. It's I I didn't ever go on an adventure like this. It's not. It's not only because it's South Korea, it's because it's such a big thing for me to go to the other end of the world without friends and family. Help. But let's talk about the travel plan. I was super confused because how in this world should I know what I will do in the whole year? Because, okay, I'm, I'm a very organized person. I plan everything ahead of time. <laughs> I plan everything way too early <laughs> but even I thought how should I plan the whole year so I searched on the internet I asked the embassy again I asked other people who did a working holiday in various other countries and it's just a guideline of what you want to do not exactly what you will do because you you, you can't plan everything it's it's impossible so for me I said okay I will I will stay in Seoul until the end of February then I will go to Jeju maybe Busan I said, I wrote down Busan Daegu area I don't know I don't know I will search for jobs in the whole country I want to work everywhere I want to see everything I want to travel everywhere in Korea because when I was there the last time, I only went to Seoul and to Gwangju for a day because I visited uh, a good friend. And I was very sad that I couldn't see more of this country, but I promise you, four weeks in Seoul and you don't even saw the half of the things you can do in Seoul. So you don't have to stick directly to your traveling plan. You can. How will they know, <laughs> to be honest? <laughs> if you're writing your traveling plan that you will go to Jeju in March and you go there in April or May or even some other time, they won't kick you out of Korea. <laughs> they just want to see that you are interested in the whole country and not only Seoul. And to be honest, the embassy in Frankfurt is quite okay. I've heard about some other embassy in North Germany and they are really strict about the traveling plan. They just want they want to know everything you want to do, like what sightseeing stuff you want to visit, why do you want to go to this town, why do you want to go there, why do you want to stay so long there, why do you go then there, and you even have to in include pictures and everything you want to go. Eh? And the MC of Frankfurt is it's really okay. It's really okay. I just wrote down real quick. Okay, I in Seoul I will do this and this and this. In Jeju I plan to do this and this and this. In Daegu Busan I plan to do this and this and this. And they accepted it. So it's okay. So one year in another country is a big thing to be honest. It's you leave behind everything for a year, not just for some weeks. There are so many things that can happen in this year. For me, my godchild will go into the school next year and I didn't think about that when I wanted to go to Korea. I just realized it after I had the visa. But the good thing is you have like multiple entries. If something like really really bad happens or good, you can leave Korea and go back to Korea without losing your visa. So when you get your passport back with your visa, you have one year to enter Korea. And when you enter Korea, this thing 
starts. So for example, when you get your visa, you can get to there like the next week if you booked your flight like this, or you can, when you get your visa in December, you can go in March, April, whatever. It's, it's, it's okay, it, it's valid for a year. If you enter Korea for the first time after you get your visa, then the thing starts, the year starts running. And in that year, you can like go out and in of Korea as often as you want. So that's the whole magic of how to get your visa for a working holiday year in Korea. Now I will continue to pack my stuff. I'm currently sitting in my room, so you will never see this background again. <laughs> And I hope you look forward to all of my upcoming videos throughout the next year that will come and we will have much fun. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please click that like button below. If you want to see all the upcoming stuff, also consider subscribing. So I hope to see you again in the next video. Until then, have a nice day. Bye bye!